Have you ever looked at a Resolve project or a Resolve tutorial and been completely overwhelmed by its apparent complexity? If so, it's almost certainly the node graph that gave you this impression. But nodes are the building block of everything that we do when we're grading in Resolve, so we have to cut through that complexity and reach a simple understanding of how nodes work. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I use nodes in my professional color grading practice. Let's take a look here inside of DaVinci Resolve, where I have a brand new project that I've yet to do any grading in. The only thing that I've done thus far is to set up my color management. Now, if you're not familiar with color management, you wanna learn more about it, I encourage you to check out my DaVinci Wide Gamut Workflow series, where I'm gonna show you how to set up the exact color management that I'm using in this project. Because if nodes are the building block of our color grades, Color management is the frame of the house. It's the structure that we operate within that allows us to consistently grade awesome looking images. For today, we're gonna to stay focused on nodes. Let's take a look here at shot number one, where I have my default node graph, which is what I'm looking at up here in the upper right-hand corner of the color page. Right now, I just have one single serial node and it's an empty node. The serial node is the default type of node when we are grading in Resolve. It's called a serial node because it happens in serial. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a moment. But before I do, we need to answer an even more fundamental question. What exactly is a node? I'm gonna give you my definition. A node is an idea. It's a visual idea of something that we want to do to our image. So here's what that looks like for me. Node number one, my empty serial node, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna label it because I like to label all my nodes based on the idea that I intend for them to express. And the idea for node number one here is exposure. I'm going to be adjusting my exposure in this node. That's all I'm going to do in this node. When I have a new idea, I'm going to create a new node. So here in node number one, the only thing I'm gonna do is adjust my offset wheel preferentially based on where I think exposure should sit, maybe somewhere like this. Once I'm ready to move on to a new idea, my next idea might be to adjust the contrast ratio of my image. That's a new idea, so I'm gonna create a new node. And by default, I'm gonna create a new serial node. As I said, serial nodes are the most common, most fundamental form of node in Resolve, and I stick to them by default, unless I have a specific reason to use something else. In this case, I don't, so I'm gonna create a new serial node by going to my color menu, nodes, and saying add serial node, or I could simply hit option S. When I do, I'm gonna have a new node downstream of or to the right of node number one, and I'm gonna label this node based on the idea that I want to express in it. This is where I'm gonna manipulate the contrast of my image. Now, what's important to understand about a serial node that we can see here now is whatever I do here in node number two, my starting point for node number two is whatever I did in the nodes that came before it. In this case, that's just one node. That's node number one, my exposure node. So node number two is receiving as its starting point whatever I did in node number one. And all I wanna do here in my contrast node is work on my idea of manipulating the contrast of this image. And I can audition the work that I'm doing by hitting Command D off and on to flip this node off and then back on and get a contextual view for what I've affected on the image with this single node. That's the enable or disable shortcut. And that's the only idea I want to explore here is my contrast. Thus far, these are always my first two nodes when I'm grading. I always start with exposure. I always move on to contrast. And there's always a third serial node that I'm going to use after this. That's going to be my balance node. So once again, I'm going to hit option S, right click and say balance. In this node, I'm going to work on the simple idea of manipulating the relationship between red and green and blue in this image. So I could grab my offset ball and simply preferentially adjust where I'm seeing that balance sit. And if I didn't have a control panel, I could also just grab this middle point of my offset ball here and drag in whatever direction I want to take the image. And once again, I could flip off and on, see how this adjustment is netting out on the image until I'm happy with the result. So this is how I use serial nodes in my workflow. As I said, serial nodes are the default node that I'm gonna use unless I have a reason to use another type of node. And I'm always gonna use a minimum of three serial nodes in any grade that I tackle. That's gonna be exposure, contrast, and balance, like so. Let's now talk about another type of node that I use in virtually every grade that I tackle, and that's a parallel node. To create a parallel node, I'm gonna to go to my color menu, I'm gonna to go to nodes, 
and I'm gonna say add parallel node, like so. And you can see I've now got this vertical stack of nodes happening in this direction. And all that I'm doing with a parallel node is combining my two nodes into this parallel mixer node in equal measure. So it doesn't matter which is on top or which is below, they are being combined in equal measure. They are being put back together by this parallel mixer here. And the way that I use parallel mixers is like so. I'm actually gonna disconnect this input into node number five, the bottom node in my parallel stack. And then I'm gonna grab this green triangle that runs into node number five and hook it up to this leftmost goalpost here in my node graph. And this is gonna mean that node number five is receiving the initial state of image that this shot began with, as opposed to whatever adjustments I'm performing on the shot up here. Now, why am I doing this? What's this all for? What this is doing is giving me a separate branch of my node graph where I can make my secondaries adjustments. Up here in this top branch, these have all been primaries adjustments. These are adjustments that affect the entire image, right? Secondaries adjustments are adjustments that only affect a particular portion of the image. So one example of a secondary might be to go over here to my curves and then look at my hue versus hue curve and say that I want to make my yellows just a bit more orange, like so, ever so slightly, maybe just four degrees or so. And again, I can flip this off and on by hitting Command D. That's very subtle, but that's a great example of an adjustment that I might indeed want to make in the course of a color grade. Now, this is what's important. The reason why I am making a secondary adjustment like I'm doing in node number two, down here in a separate branch created by my parallel mixer, is this adjustment depends on what is fed into it in terms of how it will respond. So let's say I make all of these adjustments and then my client says to me, I think you went a little bit heavy on the contrast. We need to back off the contrast a little bit. Or even more so, we might decide the balance of the shot actually isn't quite right yet and we might go in and refine what we did here in this balance node. If I were putting node number two as a simple serial node after these first three nodes, it would be subject to these manipulations and to any changes that I make in those nodes. That's not what I want. I want any secondary adjustments that I make down here to happen independently of what happens up here, and I want them to remain consistent even as I continue to go in and refine what's happening up here in this top primaries branch of my node graph. So that's how I use the parallel mixer in almost every grade that I tackle. It's to have a separate branch for my secondaries, which does not depend on what I'm doing in my primaries. And it means nothing's gonna break or get strange that did look good at one point, but now doesn't look so good because I've changed the image that is feeding into that secondary adjustment, okay? Now let's go over to shot number four, and we're gonna explore a third type of node that I love to use when I'm grading. And to get started, what I'm gonna do is right click back on the thumbnail for shot number one and say, apply grade. And you can think of what I've just done as pasting what we could call a template node graph over onto a new shot. So I might want to zero out or redo any of these adjustments here, but I have a template with labels and with a structure that works for me. And all I have to do is change the actual operations happening within these nodes. So let's just quickly do that. I'm gonna reset my, my exposure node and adjust this for what I think this shot needs, reset my contrast, adjust for what I think the shot needs there, and reset my balance and do the same thing, okay? Good example of using a template, but different adjustments based on what the image needs, all right? And then down here below in uh, node number two, I'm gonna reset this completely because I don't feel like I actually need it in this shot, at least for the time being. But what I now wanna focus on is a different type of secondary adjustment. And since I like to do all my secondary adjustments down here in this lower branch, that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna create a new serial node by hitting Option S, and I'm gonna go over to my Power Window palette and create a circular Power Window. And what I'm hoping to do here is draw a Power Window that sort of aligns with the contours of my subject's face so that I can ever so slightly soften out my subject's skin, okay? I'm gonna go nice and soft, nice big broad shape, and I'm gonna go over to my primaries palette. And there's a number of ways that I could soften out my subject's skin, manipulate the texture of the inner contents of this power window. But right now I'm gonna use my midtone detail and I'm just gonna pull it back to 
say minus six or so, just a little bit to soften things out. It's probably gonna be even tough to see over YouTube, but this is a great example of the type of subtle adjustment that I like to make with my secondaries in this lower branch of my node tree, okay? So let's say I've done that. Let's say I'm really happy with the result, even though it's quite subtle. But let's now say I wanna do something else. I wanna do a second related thing. I also would like to knock down everything around my subject to help guide the eye a little bit more toward my subject. Now, if I wanted to, I could simply create a new serial node, draw a new power window, realign it with my subject like I just did, and then I could go down here to this button and invert that power window, and then I would be free to manipulate something like my offset to knock down the contents around my subject's face. But there's actually a better way to do this using what we can call an outside node. So let's delete node number six, go back to node number four, and I'm gonna go to color, nodes, add outside node, or I could simply hit option O. And when I do, I'm going to have the same power window available to me to limit my adjustment that I had back in node number four, except I'm gonna be using the exact opposite of it. So if I go to my highlight mode, to this magic wand up here, you can see what I mean. Where before I was affecting everything inside of this region, I'm now affecting everything outside of this region. And what's cool is if I go back over to node number four, and I reposition my power window, that position will automatically be updated in node number six. Those mats or those masks are married together. It's actually one in the same mask, as you can see by looking at this dotted line that connects the alpha channel of node number four into node number six. So here on node number six, I can turn my highlight mode off, and I could once again go to my offset and just bring that down a little bit. I'm using my control surface for this, but you could also use your offset wheel right here and knock down everything around your subject. And I'm flipping that off and on by hitting Command D. I can also drag to select nodes four and six and look at the net result of both softening my subject's skin and knocking down everything around my subject, okay? Now, these are not the only types of nodes available to us inside of Resolve. In fact, there are several other types of nodes that perhaps we can explore in a future video. But if you can get a fundamental understanding of the serial node, the outside node, and the parallel mixer node, you're well on your way to being able to master your node graph and use it to craft great looking images. And the last thing I wanna emphasize before we wrap up for today is a question that very often comes up when we are talking about node graphs. How many nodes should I have? How many nodes is too many? How many nodes is too few? Well, we've started to answer that question by simply defining what a node is or what a node should be. I gave you my definition. A node is an idea, right? So new idea, new node. That means we should have at least as many nodes as we have ideas. That also means that if you look at one of those complex node graphs that we talked about at the beginning of today's video, there's probably a lot of ideas in play for that grade, right? This is not always a great thing. Usually, the more ideas, the more nodes that you see crowding a node graph, the higher the likelihood that the ideas have yet to be distilled down into their simplest and their most essential form. And that should always be our aim when we are grading. I talk about this in my book, The Colorist Ten Commandments. Simplicity beats complexity. So, how many nodes should we have? How big should your node graph be? Well, it depends on what you're doing, but it should be as small as it can be while allowing you to accomplish your creative goals and of course, those of your clients. So I hope you guys enjoyed this initial tour through the way I think about nodes and some of the key types of nodes that I use in my grading practice. Let me know if so. Let me know if you wanna learn more about nodes in future videos, and I'll see you for the next one.